Hey yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ The Roll Podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never here. Yo, what up? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. And we got a special, special guest. <laughs> this is one of my my favorite people, my favorite DJs. He's actually one of the first DJs who inspired me to believe that you could DJ events and, and uh, parties on USBs. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> his library was, was so organized. <laughs> And he was just killing it. I was like, oh, shit, this is like, I, I maybe you might want to go on USB sticks. Uh-huh. But he's one of my favorite people ever. And uh, I'm really happy to have him here, man. We got San Diego's finest DJ Chaos in the building. Good What's good, man? What's good? What's good, brother? Happy to be here. Happy, happy, happy be birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy Appreciate birthday. We'll sing to you at the end. Happy and never. You, and happy belated to, to never <laughs> last you. week. It's the Virgo brothers Virgo. over there. It's Virgo like season. me, him, and Karma. We always have. Yeah, exactly. Birthday. Oh, like really? Back to back yeah. to back. Yeah. Back to back yeah. to back. You guys, are, uh, you guys are fucking scumbags. That's why you guys... <laughs> 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 you guys, you guys can like handle your liquor, man. Is that like a Virgo thing? Maybe you, you out here. I've been, I've been known. I've been known. <laughs> For, you're dude, you're dude. out here on no sleep, huh? Pretty much, yeah. God, I'm, used, I'm used to it though. Yo, that's crazy. But um, like we've tried to make it, make this happen, like. For five like, times what, oh yeah two, I've, I two think years three I've, years i think we wanted you on a podcast since uh yeah since like first, since, I, I mean for a second there i stopped believing you no <laughs> we had this conversation right like we, you were telling me like yo let's get your money it's not happening nah, it's always do i seem like that kind of <laughs> like that kind of person i'm like yo like if you you guys should come you should come you know what i'm saying pause say hey, we should edit that out <laughs> no we <laughs> editing that out no, no i mean we're it taking it. that out leave it in no no that's not we're letting we're letting her feel the fuck <laughs> that was that was disgusting. That right was there. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like boom, 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 boom. I, no more camera am- angles on me while I'm speaking. <laughs> right. Right? No, but we're we're happy to have you here. Finally, you, man. Appreciate you know it. Saying? And happy birthday. Thank you. So you you did R and B and ribs yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, crazy. That's your what your second third time. Third time. Third time. Yeah. Such a great party, right? It's it's literally the best. It's my favorite party I've ever played. Really? That's like yeah. Oh wait, know. so you did two in San Francisco. And then the San Diego one. And then you did the San Diego yeah. one where they teamed up with Jules. Right. That was a dope party. Yeah. That was great. Man. It was such a good time. It's 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 still one of you haven't experienced it never? I haven't experienced it yet. Only oh in Texas. God. Like <laughs> I know. But I always tell people like Sorry, no. <clears throat> people that are like fans of, uh, or that want to go to the party, I always tell them go do the San Francisco one first. Yeah, first, right? That one's so much fun. It's um I love San Diego, obviously. That's my city, but the San Francisco one, whole different vibe. But I feel like I even prepared differently for them. Really? Yeah. 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 Of course, you're in the Bay. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. But like, you know, I think what Jules is doing, you know, shout out to Jules mm-hmm. with Hickeys and Dry Humps yeah. in San Diego and what they're doing with Miles Medina. Yeah. I think that's like, it's almost like it's it's very, I mean, when they, when RB and Ribs went to San Diego, they teamed up with Jules, right. Hickeys, uh, Hickeys and Dry Humps. And it was just like a great marriage. Like, what's, the scene that Jules is creating in San Diego, I think, is, yeah, is man. great um, as well. Yeah, I've been wanting to work with him for a long time, and finally I'm getting a chance to do so. Um, you know, we got this R&B party coming up uh, uh, at Sidebar next uh, Thursday. And yeah. It's like one of those things when we ta- started talking about doing an R&B party, is like there was no way we were going to do it without having Jules, Jules be yeah. involved. Yeah. He's doing some amazing things in the city. Yeah, he's, it's so great that uh, he's been, and he's been doing it for so long. And uh, I shout to Sidebar too that you yeah. guys, and it was like it, it almost like you had the whole when you did the San Diego R and B and ribs, you had like the whole staff from uh, Sidebar yeah. over there, so they got to actually witness it mm-hmm. and see like, and then you know I feel like that's when the wheels started turning. They're like, oh shit, this can work like the, at Sidebar. Like, yeah. Huge supporters of uh, anything I do outside of Sidebar. Mm-hmm. Huge supporters like I had a, a whole entourage i guess you could say yeah. yesterday with me so we flew oh, they, to san francisco. they flew to san francisco oh, and then wow. we flew out here last night too get out of here yeah. shout out to sidebar I, I gotta say like I, I had a conversation with these guys and yeah. we were like talking about like our favorite rooms with the best crowds and the best mm-hmm. energy there's something about sidebar you know i don't know if it was i I've, i never spun there before the pandemic right but when i started spinning there after the pandemic it just took me back to like that old school new york bottle service intimate club where the energy is just crazy mm-hmm. and right. you can just kind of you can make left right turns you can kind of 
you know, you can take them on a ride and they bring them back. And it's like, it's, it's very like unique. I don't know if I'm the only one that's experienced it or like every DJ that you've had there. No, it's says the, the same thing, right? Everybody says the exact same thing. What is it about? I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, it's a combination of things, man. It's yeah. such a great room. It's, it almost feels like a pocket sized Vegas. It's how I tell people. Yeah. Yeah. A little right? bit. They, yeah. You have this crazy energy. It's like such a small room, but it's just, uh, you know, everybody's all the tables are on top of each other. It's just like this crazy energy that you can create there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it starts. It all really starts with the staff. Right. The moment you walk in, like they make you feel like family. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like as an out of town DJ, you don't feel like you're out of town. They make sure they go out of their way. They go above and beyond to make sure that everybody's comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely right, man. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I will give it to the staff, the yes. management. Mm -hmm. They always come up to me. They greet me. They say what's up. And like even like they even protect me at times yeah. because they, you know, like every all the tables are having requests. They're requesting shit. Right. Like they're one of the few motherfuckers that won't relay the request to me. <laughs> like they'll literally say like, you know, they'll like defend me to the tables and be like, yo, he's going to he's going to play all that shit later. Yeah. Just trust him. And I was like, yo, I've never had a manager or anybody, <laughs> any staff like tell that to tables before. You yeah, know? No, they, they do a great job. Uh, the whole team, like everybody like kind of works together to make sure like it's a it's a seamless night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of credit goes to them. Yeah. It just starts from the top. Like literally, it's just such a family culture. I've I've worked at so many venues over the years, like nobody else like does it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, man. And you, you've been doing the bookings at San Diego uh, for yeah. Sidebar San Diego. Yeah. How long now? Uh, I officially took over two years ago. Last two month. years yeah. ago. Yeah, that's when you kind of like reached out to me. Yeah, you were the you were the first one. You know, you're the first one I had this conversation <laughs> with, and we'd have we've had this conversation in our past few episodes like a right. lot. Mm -hmm. We're almost like beating a dead horse, but you were the first person that planted the seed when we were talking about it. And we were having a conversation and you're like, yo, I can't find younger DJs mm -hmm. to do this room. Uh, yeah. And what, like, can you, can we, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Well, well that's changed. Yeah. Now I have young guys. Now, now I finally found mm -hmm. the guys in San Diego yeah, like, yeah. over the past year, like who are really talented mm -hmm. and they have the right attitude. Right. For me, like that's the biggest thing. The intangibles is what I'm looking for. Anybody can fucking DJ a room, right? Nice. But what else do you bring to the table? You know what I mean? I want guys who are hard workers, who are like just good people in general, who mm -hmm. I can trust. You know what I mean? Especially with that room with Sidebar. It's so, it, that room, it, it takes a lot. You know, you well, got to Well, let's, let's go back two years then. Right. And tell me what was the obstacle or what, what, what were you seeing that you, you couldn't find? Um, it's, it's just like the talent was there, but the guys just don't care enough. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they, they what, like explain like they are they just like, trying to do themselves? They're yeah, 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 to and then they just kind of show up. It's almost like they're just there for the check. You know, they don't really care about the room. They don't care about the venue. They're just there to pick up a check, and that's you know, you can't win. That. So what are you saying? They like they weren't taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. mm. Why is that though? I really don't know. I wish I could like we. I mean, we've had this discussion. Is it like a, a generational thing? Like right? Is so like then, what's thing? changed? What do you think's changed in the, in the two years? Um. For me in particular, like I feel like I've I've let it be known exactly what I'm looking for and what I need. Like I set a standard for them, mm -hmm. and I hold every single DJ accountable to that standard. You know what I mean? So is it is it the same DJs that just kind of understood it new or more, or is it just a just new, new breed? It's a whole new breed right now. A new breed. Yeah. Wow. So I have like three, four guys, young guys that I really trust, and they're like, I'm actually going out of my way to make sure like I can kind of. Um, for like a better word, just nurture them and take care of those guys, protect those guys and help build them up. Mm. You know, it's kind of like, uh, for me, the way I see it right now, they're young. They're still starting off. They're doing opening sets and whatnot, but yeah. I'm treating it like a minor league system in baseball, right? Like sports. Yeah. Like I really want to coach them up. I really want to help them out and elevate them. My goal for them within the next year, they're all headlining. Mm. You know what I mean? And do you think it's because also maybe they got a chance to like listen to other DJs and see what's going on or? What, uh, I encourage happened? that. That's one of the things I do. Like I yeah, tell yeah. them like, yo, if you're off, go out, go check out this guy. I tell him, hey, Crooked's in town. Go check him out. Watch him work that room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, something that I used to do all the time, you know, coming up. Yeah. I was fortunate to come up with a, a good, um, like a good, like kind of like um, collective of DJs that I looked up to and that taught me the right things. And how to go about my business, th that's not out there right now. 
You you were opening at Stingery, right? Yeah, back that, in the that's day. How you, I met you. I, I, I was open for me. Yeah, I, I opened up for like you. Yeah. At Harvard, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, you literally came up with Dynamics, right? Mm-hmm. At the same time. Me and Shout Dynamics. Shout out to yeah. Dynamics. Uh, yeah, we were, we were roommates. That's my brother right there. <laughs> you were, we were word. roommates then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was, that was a fun time brother. in life. Yeah, that was a fun time. But, uh, <laughs> I was like, you guys kind of looking like. Yeah. Wait, what was it? Two bedroom, one bedroom? Two bedroom. Two bedroom, okay. I was going to see if you guys took turns who got to bed <laughs> in the couch <laughs> and went back and forth. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, was, it was definitely Wait, a Wait, so you time. guys were roommates when you guys were opening at Stingery mm-hmm. in San Diego? And oh. just to let you guys know, Stingery is like the old, uh, what's it called now? It's, it's Nova, Nova now, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge, like, I don't know what, like 1,500 capacity or more club. More, it was like 2,000. 2,000 mm-hmm. capacity club. It was like huge fucking club. Now it's a yeah. EDM club, right? Yeah, it's yeah, mainly Nova. Yeah. Nova. Yeah, Nova. yeah, yeah. Uh, the Insomnia guys Insomnia, running. Yeah. yeah, you guys used to open. You would like you and Dynamic were so like respectful. You guys were like um, really respectful. Like the like the best openers. You guys were just like. Yeah, I think I think for us, uh, we were just really hungry for it. We really wanted it. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody could tell us that we weren't gonna make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? uh, but it, it was different back then. Like like I said, like uh, the mentality that we had. Like as an opener, you show up, you, you you set the crowd up, you set it up for the headliner. But then we were staying the entire night. We we're watching the headliner. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. it was like I was your assistant. Like, what do you need? Do you need a drink? Do you need me to hook? A, do you need me to clean your needles? Like, what do you need? You never did shit for me, man. I never told you to do <laughs> that. Damn, you cold, I never, never did, did that. Never, never, <laughs> never did that shit. <laughs> no, but but it was it was. I might have said, "Give me a drink," but uh, <laughs> <laughs> ne- never. Yeah, like, you can give me a drink, man. Yeah. Never like, uh, I never told these motherfuckers, "Yo, get me a drink." I don't think uh, I did that. I would never do that. Something yeah. you'd be surprised with some of the guys that <laughs> would do that. But, um, those pedals as I walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but nowadays, like the openers show up, they leave, and they leave right away. Is it because they got another gig somewhere else, or you think they're just not interested in the culture? They're of, just like, not interested people. in it. Like, how are you going to improve? Really, not watching people. Do you think that's it? That they they they're not interested. And they just want to leave. It's you think it's selfish. like an ego thing a little bit? Yeah, it's a little uh, that too. I don't want to watch this DJ right. like do this room mm-hmm. when, I, I, should when I should be doing this doing room. the room. Yeah. yeah, you think that's the energy? Uh yeah, wow. Mm. A lot of times, unfortunately, yeah. Interesting. And um, I noticed that though that you know I I I do think that a lot of them do have gigs though. Like I do think they have gigs. Yeah. But I do think you know there's some that just kind of leave because they're just like, fuck this shit. Mm-hmm. I should be. I should here. be blocking this room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. That, I mean, it's interesting that's that the, you notice that. Yeah. You know. Well, I guess because you're, you're seeing the next gen and you're like, wow, they're right. not. They're moving different. Yeah, right? I'm just, I'm like I said, like I'm just used to something, and like I kind of notice it, and I see it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's not my style. Yeah, we're not doing that. What did I tell you when, uh, when I signed on for Sidebar <laughs> in the beginning? I don't even remember you telling. You me. don't remember? No. I told you. I, I oh don't no, 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 yeah, I don't, yeah, no. What did I tell yeah. you? Yeah, he's like, he's like, I don't need an opener. Yeah, don't give me a fucking opener. I don't want an opener <laughs> ever. Um, the, one of one of my first memories about Crooked but I, I feel like I fucked it up for other DJs, right? Was it? No, 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 no. Every, 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 everybody, everybody actually prefers. <laughs> really? There's literally, and I'm not gonna name names, but there's only like a, like maybe four or five DJs. Like, but they're West Coast dudes. Okay. The West Coast guys yeah, yeah, want yeah, openers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right? Am they I wrong? To, they want to go on 1145. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crowds but I get it. I what, get it. Wait, what time? Okay, so what time do you go on and what time are you done? I'm there at 930. Uh-huh. I'm there at 930. And that's the start close. time? 10 to close. 10 to yeah. close yeah. I'm there at 930 and I set up. That's not a bad, that's not a long set. It's no, not four hours. I mean, for a lot of DJs, that's a long set. <laughs> no. Uh, but I like the control. I like the uh, the control. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who do you trust more than yourself, right? Well. I don't, you know what? There's so many great DJs in San Diego. Yeah. There's yeah. so many talented, great DJs. Yeah. There are a lot of horrible openers. <laughs> Why is that? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> Do you, you feel it's, me? Yeah, yeah. Like in the past, like ever since, you know, the chaos dynamic era of mm-hmm. DJs, the next gen, so many great DJs, they're just horrible openers. Because they go for something. I'm like, yeah, and I tell them, I literally tell them like, you should be headlining. Like I, mm-hmm. you should be headlining, but just kind of like, if you're opening, just do your, yeah. do the, do the job. Just play the role. Just play the role. Yeah. 
But like, yo, you should be headlining. Like, you're good enough to headline. But if I'm gonna open, I'm just gonna show open. some respect. Yeah. Well, it's not about. I mean, I, mean, I guess it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It's no, respect, it, it's like really that. about you know the experience. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When when a, when someone walks in, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's about the opener setting the tone yeah, for what no, they're. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but you know, I I just thought it was weird. That's why I was like, I don't even want to deal with it. There's like literally multiple venues in San Diego that I've I've done and I've asked. I'm like. Let me, I'll do the whole night. Yeah, I'll just, I prefer it too. But I feel like I fucked it up because I, then you could tell like other, <laughs> that, that you became could tell the standard. like other DJs like, well, you want uh, an opener? Crooked doesn't have an opener. Oh, and I, I use it all the time. I'm like, Crooked wouldn't ask me for that shit. Crooked Cro- doesn't want an you opener. You know Crooked? He doesn't yeah. request one. You know that guy? Yeah. yeah. He doesn't do that like, shit. like, fuck, now I gotta do this whole Crooked. shit. One of my actually first memories of um, opening up for Crooked was at uh, Stingaree. And I remember the first time I ever opened up for you. Yeah. Uh, they told me like, hey, by the way, Crooked likes to jump on early. Don't be offended. Mm. If he boots you off early, don't be offended. That's just his thing. Why did you do that, Crooked? Wait, wait, Crooked, did you jump on early? Oh, he did. He yeah. he jumped on at 10.30. <laughs> no I was like, way. fuck, I'm whack. <laughs> oh, did you feel that way? I, I, I did. Yeah. But I tried to keep in mind like what they had told me. They're like, don't be offended by it. No, no, just no. jumps on early. But I thought, I was like, yo, like, I'm What was the start time at that time? 11.30? Probably eleven forty five, yeah. maybe. Uh nine PM doors. I didn't come on at a pause. I didn't come on at ten thirty. Probably like you eleven. Did. Really? I have an incredible memory, man. Oh wow. And then what time what was your start time? Like nine? Nine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not yeah, early day. <laughs> you know what you know what I learned is that like we I think we had a conversation about this, is that like like now I'm trying to actually like I don't know if you're in the same boat, but I'm trying to like really kind of get good at an hour set. Mm-hmm. Because like everywhere, like people are asking me to do these hour sets at these right. like parties, and I I don't really know how to approach this shit. You know, like I'm just a little because I'm I'd rather DJ longer than and then for me to condense it into an hour, I'm just kind of like it for me. It's, it, it's a little bit of a like it's a handicap for me right now, and I'm trying to like master it a little bit. You know, yeah, you I prefer to just do the whole. Night. Set, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's you, like hard to condense all yeah. of this, all these genres, all this music into like an hour mm-hmm. and then to be like, how do I, and then my, my instant thought is how do I not step on the toes of everyone around me? Right. You know what I mean? Like the, whoever's before me or after me, well, my main concern is whoever's after. Like the kind of a, like analogy that I use a lot is like, I'm trying to tell a story when I'm DJing. Yeah. How do I tell a story if I leave parts out of it? Yeah, like, yeah. You're missing chapters? Like, how do we, how do you really do that? Yeah, how but if like if your screenplay is three hours, right. how do I make like a forty five minute episode out of that screenplay? You're gonna do you miss, know, you you're, know you're, what yeah, I'm saying? You're gonna right? miss a lot of important things. Yeah. you know what I mean. So for me, um, you know, when I went to San Diego, I noticed when I was coming from Vegas and I was doing like six hour sets in Las mm-hmm. Vegas, and I went to San Diego at Stingery. I I I used to start at eleven forty five, and then by one thirty, they're like lights up, and I'm like, oh shit, I didn't play any yeah. of the. I was I was the approaching hits. it like a Vegas room, yep. and I was like, yep. "Oh shit!" I didn't play the bangers, and then I started being like, "Play it earlier," and I would still be like, "Oh shit!" I could have played this, this, this. Mm-hmm. So then my thinking was like, "All right, I'm just gonna start early, yeah, and I'm gonna just start hitting them earlier." And then not only am I, and then I just kind of feel out the room and I see where I could take it. Whereas right. like, I also started feeling like I was just coming into the room, and I was just doing this one set of like bangers and stuff and i wasn't knowing who was in the room earlier right. whereas like if i went there an hour early and i played a little left and a little right i'd be like oh, okay there's actually some motherfuckers here that want a little more house right and we're like there's some motherfuckers here that want a little more latin and then when it was prime time i was like okay i can like i can play around with this more than just doing like this fixed set for like yeah. you know like an hour and a half or two hours every fucking time yeah, and I mean that's the other beautiful thing about San Diego is that you can do all things there. Yeah, yeah. The market really asks for that. Like you, you it commands that. Like um, you have to be proficient in all genres. You can't just be good at one thing. You have to be great at all things. That's the, that's the one great thing about that's one of the great things about San Diego is there's such a great dance and house music scene there. Yeah, and then uh, the other thing too with the gas lamp, the way it's it's set up, there's so many great venues within a one mile square mile, uh, you know, proximity. Mm-hmm. So if you're not whack, I mean, if you're whack, if you're not doing a great job, people have options. Yeah, yeah. Yep. They'll leave. I don't give a fuck. They'll, yeah, wh- they'll find another party, you know, another uh, another good party. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming up in San Diego, who did you learn from? Oh man, um, Scooter. 
Scooter and Rags. Shout DJ to Rags. Shout to Rags, bro. Rags is a fucking shit. legend. So, um, like my early inspirations were just um back in you know back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> um, back in I, the I would, day. I would, I would listen to the the radio, and they had dope DJs. Slide, Richie Rich, Marlino. These guys were just doing dope shit on the radio, and I would actually record them on tape. And then I, I would just play back and try to emulate what they were doing. But those were like, those were the guys that kind of like how I, I, I formulated everything. I, I tried to do what they were doing. But like Rags, man, it's uh, he was just killing it. And he's and still it, doing it too. And he's still doing it. Same with Scooter. And then when I came up, uh, Scooter was the guy on the scene, still is the, the yeah, guy yeah. in San Diego. I mean, um, and I was so fortunate to meet Scooter because the moment I met him, even though I was a nobody, he literally opened up like, you know, um, his resources to me. Mm-hmm. Hit me up. He was like, hit me up. Anything you need, what can I do for you? You know, he would answer every call, every text, every phone call. Wow. Still does. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Scooter's but, like a really like he's not only a great DJ. Mm-hmm. I've I called him like the kick Capri of California <laughs> to me. I, I, there's no one. There's no one else in Cali. That has a mic presence or has the energy or the veracity. Yeah. And like he and just like he will just go on there and just like stop the music and yell at the crowd. Yep. I mean, he's like a force. Yeah. He's like he sounds like a wrestler. He has such a presence. And I remember yeah. like when I came to San Diego, I probably told the story before. But everyone was like, Scooter, Scooter, Scooter. And I was like, this is the wackest name in the world. <laughs> like, who? <laughs> like, I remember, like, talking with Sean Perry in New York. I'm like, I don't know. Everyone keeps talking about the scooter. He was like, Skeeter. We, we were thinking of, like, uh, the, the, the Little Rascals. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, his picture, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah. look, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And then I finally heard him, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, you wouldn't this, think he could play hip hop. <laughs> no, he's a fucking he's monster. Crazy. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, I was like, remember, I, was, I think it was his, his Wednesday night party. It was an R and B party uh, at uh, Confidential. Confidential, yeah. and they and he blew my mind. Pause. I yeah. was like, "Oh my god, this guy is he's the truth. He's the yeah. truth." Yeah, that's how I met him too. I, I happened to uh, go to Confidential when I was DJing, and I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like this is a whole other level, right? Yeah, there's a whole other level of DJ out there. Um, he was one of those guys that really, uh, you know, in those days, just like kind of like helped me out a lot. You know, he taught me the right way to do things and still I, I pick his brain about things here and there like when I when I run into him like he's just doing things the 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 way I want to do them too you know what I mean mm-hmm. not just uh not just DJing but family but also and also business yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's he's literally writing out the blueprint for all of us no no yeah so it's like guys like him um Another guy, not necessarily in San Diego, um, but like IE, I guess, uh, Loxy. Loxy was another one of those guys who really, really? Yeah. went out of his way to like teach me a lot, take his time, like help me out, anything mm-hmm. I did. Um, and also um, the rocket scientists from the Bay, Guzzi oh, and Solar. Yeah, yeah. Those guys, yeah, they helped me out so much, man. Like I, I owe them so much because they really, really like helped me out. Like if, I don't, I don't, I don't like take that shit lightly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Especially like coming up for me in particular. I didn't have like a support system. I didn't have even my family like they didn't want me to do the DJ shit. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have anybody like encouraging me. I had my uncle. My one the uh, my uncle was the one who bought me on my first setup. Like he just went out of his way to buy me my first setup, and that was the only dude who ever said like you can do this shit. You know, so like to have like those guys who I admired and respect so much like to come in and help me, bro. Like that meant the fucking world to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they didn't have to. They didn't have to do any of that. So for me now, it's like I want to be able to do the same for somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I take so much. Um, yeah, I take a lot of time and effort to make sure I'm doing the same for the for the younger guys right now. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, and you yeah. do that, bro. Yeah, you do. I mean, every time I hit you up, I mean, we talk a lot of bullshit about sports yeah. and shit at Disney, <laughs> but when I need like some guidance or some shit, like I hit you up, and you're always available no matter what time it is. Even when you're working, you're like, "Yo, I'm busy right now, but hit me in the morning, whatever." But yeah. you always. Someone to call in if you need help or guidance and shit. So, so chaos is your, your OG. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good friend, you know. I, I can't call no, him. You sound like he's your OG. I know. No, yeah, that's I, it. I just, he's someone I'm to his count. OB1. He's <laughs> OB1. Yeah. No, he's just someone you can count on. As nah, like when he gets out the car, you're going to carry his bags. Yeah, he's yeah, your yeah, OG. Yeah. Right? I'm going to get him his. What do you say? What do you say? He got you your drinks or whatever you needed. That's yeah, what yeah, I am yeah. for him. 
Yeah, no, you got to um, call him OG from now on. Yeah, I don't want to. Uh, I don't know. You just said he was your OG. How are you not going to call him? Back, no, I just check said, it. I just said that he's a great. Like, he's always a How are you going to give someone an OG title, but then, but then take it away? Let's name him OG. No. I don't want to. Yeah, no. Yeah, you got to call him Dude. Uncle Chaos from no. now on. <laughs> you starting, hey, to get call, now? you're starting to get called Uncle? Uh, no, I, I told you OG. That's OG? a new thing. People Everyone's call me calling? OG. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not. Like me? Your motherfucker yo. started calling me that. I was like, damn, man. Like, I'm not. And I was like, yo, I'm not that. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm that old. I don't know. Like, yeah. I, 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 always, uh, I always tell wifey, like, obviously, uh, I'm older now. I'm, I'm 38. But in my head, I feel like 24. My back and my knees tell me otherwise. But I feel like I'm 24, man. Like, I feel like I'm still, like, I don't even feel like I've hit my stride yet as a DJ. It's mm. crazy to say, like, I've been doing this for so fucking long. But I don't even feel like I'm yeah. there yet. Wait till they call you double OG. <laughs> Triple, triple, oh, you're a double OG. Nah. Still years, right? Double OG, triple double OG, OG. OG. You've you been around for years, man. You yeah, no, uh, you've been an OG. Oh wait, they do say triple OG. Right? They do say triple OG. What does yeah. that mean when you like on your deathbed know, or some right? shit? Yeah, like an AARP card and shit. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll smack somebody if they uh, call me triple OG. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> you start waiting. You start doing that old face, like Damn. I'm looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> it's triple Damn OG right son. there. <laughs> you used to kill it back in the studio. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> talk yes, about yes, sonny boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. My dad said he saw you when he was young. I was like, fuck. Oh, no. Nah. Jesus. <laughs> That's a it's triple like, OG right there. Oh, shit. How long have you been spinning in the clubs right now? 20 years now. 20 years? Wait, man. when did you start DJing? 18? I was 12 years old, so now 12. it's like 20, yeah, 26 years now. Shit. Damn. Damn. So you never had support from your family. Like, my, <laughs> like my mom used to throw my records <laughs> out. She uh, hated it. I, I, I love my, my, my parents, right? Yeah. Like, they're amazing, but I still remember one thing that sticks out to me. Yeah. Uh, there was a time... Where like I was actually struggling to fucking find gigs and get work and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I was actually living at home with my mom. What year was this? Oh, this is uh, two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Two thousand seven. Before you and yeah. Dynamic, yeah, yeah. crashed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, I was struggling to to find gigs and make money, and like obviously she's like, "Yo, you gotta help around the house and whatnot." Yeah. And I remember my mom telling me, "She's like, I would rather you just go and work at a taco shop than, you know, mm -hmm. like actually do this DJ shit." So yeah, that stuck with me wait yeah. you first generation or second first Oof. Yeah. why did that hit you so hard ah man it's like when you go through life like wanting something so much and everyone yeah. just kind of keeps shutting the door on you and telling you no 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 bro like it kind of hits you a little bit and then you were like you know I mean? even my mom is disappointed yeah. in me like right she's like she <laughs> like even like the one person that's supposed to be looking out for me like if yeah. she's telling me no like what the fuck like what am i doing you know what i mean and I actually contemplated everything. Like I, didn't, I was like, should I really even be pursuing this still? So then, what happened? It, it, did it light the uh, like a, a bigger fire? I don't like to be told no, man. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I kind of like walk around still with like a chip on my shoulder, like I'm out to prove everybody wrong. Mm. So yeah. Yeah. So you know. Um, so yeah. What does she think about you now? Oh, now she brags about me to all her friends, man. Oh my God, me see me call DJ. He's with Pitbull. Yeah. <laughs> has she has she been to a party or like has she seen um, you DJ? In the I think club? she's seen me DJ maybe once, once, one time. Yeah, that was it. She stayed the whole night or uh, like no. you don't remember? No. She's a cyber. Was that, that I mean, you? This happened to you recently? Yeah, re I was gonna bring this up. Yeah, recently I've been DJing uh, as a hobby since like mm -hmm. 2009, but really like six five years. But my mom's never seen me DJ ever mm -hmm. outside of the house. And she came, her and my dad came to Vegas, and then they ended up where I was DJing at. And my mom, that was the first time she saw me DJ. And I, I, I was like, it fucked me up for a second because I was like, fuck, like, like this is, they, they were very supportive with me and shit. Mm -hmm. And they supported me with everything I ever wanted to do. But it was just like, damn, it took this long for them to see what I'm doing. Yeah. Like when I'm, I moved out the house and I was like, Going to Vegas to pursue this shit, right? They supported me no matter what. But I think them seeing where how far I came and how much I'm doing now and what I'm doing now, I think it it was my mom started crying shit and I was mm -hmm. just like it got, it got really sentimental. Yeah. <laughs> in the DJ booth. But um yeah, it, it was it was crazy, especially being Mexican, because we're both Mexican, but being first generation, you know, they come to this country literally not knowing how to speak the language, and right. possibly not knowing anybody over here, and then just to give their kids the best living situation, the best opportunities, and no matter what, supporting them, like, 
it's crazy. It's a crazy yeah. feeling. Too. I mean, uh, obviously, as a parent now, I, I kind of see their perspective and like why they might have like gone about it that way, right? They, yeah, they just want what's best for me. I totally they don't. Understand they don't want now. you to suffer. Yeah, they and, then, and they, but they don't understand anything outside of being uh, one of the traditional careers as a cop or as a fireman right, right. or whatever the doctor, whatever. And for them to be like, wait, you get paid for playing music? <laughs> like, you get, like, how is this working? Like, it, it's I mean, I mean, you bring up a good point, like, as far as, like, being, like, you know, like, first generation and, like, uh, what our parents go through, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's still times now where I feel guilty that I, I'm making money by doing this, right? Like, they actually had to work hard, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They put in a lot of work just to provide for us. But I can I can understand where you're coming from because my dad's a plumber and yeah. he's, he's been a plumber mm-hmm. since eighty two eighty one, and um, like he had a like I went to work with my, with my dad as a kid and I see everything he had to do here. That's main actual work, man. Shit. They're actually doing yeah, they're work, actually, right? They're actually they had breaking to earn their a back fucking and dollar, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I, I I have a career where someone's like, yo, you play music so good that we're gonna trust you to play mm-hmm. music, and here's an X amount of money. For you to for what you do, and you're like someone trusts you that much, mm-hmm. and we love that just as a hobby, as a passion, as a some type of fulfillment. Like, oh, I enjoy yeah, making music and shit like that. So it, it is a little. I do feel the guilt sometimes. Mm-hmm. That you're like, I man, mean, you should, it's just this gratitude. You shouldn't feel guilt. You should feel gratitude. That's what yeah. It I is, mean, I'm, I'm coming yeah. to like terms with it, right? Obviously, yeah. uh, but for me, it's like, um, yeah, man. It's like I understand that their struggle. No, yeah, is completely yeah. different. But, yeah, but their struggle, your struggle. Mm-hmm. You know, even you know the the situation where you were talking about your your mom telling you about right. the taco shop. Yeah, and then you know your kids are gonna go through the same thing, but yeah. they're gonna have. They, everyone needs to go through that path. Yeah, to lead to where they are. And that struggle and some of that suffering actually adds to passion mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. determination. And it, it well, just creates no. layers and layers, you know? Yeah, I mean... Um, it's, it's just tough to, like, watch your kids go through it because mm-hmm. you want, like, the best for them. But right. they still need to have some type of suffering or sacrifice, oh, no, that, you know? I, I talk it's about the, that all the, the time. Worst, like, you know? obviously, like, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to do what I do and, like, provide yeah. for my family. And my, my kids don't struggle. They're doing well, right? Mm-hmm. My kids... Mm-hmm. But I, I want that, especially when my oldest son. I want that struggle for him. I want yeah. him to learn that you know he's got to earn everything. Right, nothing You're not, comes easy. Yeah, not, not at all. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's so easy nowadays to just be able to spoil the kids and shit. Like you want to give them everything, but at the same time, I got to actually pull back a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, do you make him do like? Like chores around oh, the house, yeah. or what do you? Oh, yeah. What do you? Yeah, do you, he, he, do you he do doesn't that? do. Yeah, uh, we don't do like allowance. He, uh, we call it payday. He gets what payday. Do, what is that structure of? Um, just obviously school first. Yeah, school is the most important fucking thing. That's like I drill that into him. But it's just like helping around the house, just being responsible for your own things. Like handle your own business. Like he knows exactly what his duties are every single day. Like he's got his own set of responsibilities. But um, just anything, just help, just help around the house, be contributor around the house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then that's how he earns his payday. How old is his son now? Nine, nine Nine? and a half. Yeah. What's his payday? How much are you giving? Yeah, what's the, what's how, the, how do you, wait, wait, how how do you give him a rent? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not gonna, how does he get paid? Weekly? Wait, what's the, weekly? I'm, I'm, curi- weekly, I'm curious weekly, to know. Weekly. He's what, not going to hear this, so. No, 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 no I want to no, know what the <clears throat> weekly allowance is for a nine-year-old in 2023. Yeah, because I'll say how much I got as a kid. And then, we but were, what year was I, I got? Nothing. Two thousand. <laughs> but I had to do shit like no. But it, the way it is is like certain chores and certain yeah. things around the house have a, a, a dollar value, and the, he just adds up. He's actually you know just marks off whatever he's been doing and he it accumulates. So, so it was like it's 50, up to him. So like, like twenty what? a week. No, less, around there, less, less. Like ten. That's good. Yeah, that's not bad. That's I got twenty to twenty a week. When my sister was raising my niece, mm-hmm. I think she was giving my niece a weekly amount of whatever her age was. So she was eight. She got eight dollars, and if she's nine, she got nine dollars. Shit's expensive as fuck though right now. Yeah, yeah. Everything you know, like especially with the kids, like the things he wants now, like it's like it's starting to hit me in the pocketbook right now. Like he's starting to like like what? Like what is he? Oh, he's starting to like expensive things. Like Like what? Like what? what? Video games, games, sneakers. Like just what's the most expensive shit he's asked for? And you're like, are you out of your probably fucking Legos. Bro, what? You know, like the fucking the the the, the Marvel Legos. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I got into Legos in the last. This yeah. guy's into everything. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Weren't you like talking about magic cards for a second? No, they're called Pokemon cards. <laughs> the Pokemon, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, no there's is. like magician cards that are worth like oh, no, 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 hundreds of thousands that, of dollars now. No, or millions, right? That's different. Yeah, yeah. No, I, mine was like sports cards, baseball, basketball, football, and Pokemon cards. But you watch like these live streams of yeah, people I opening. 
Who the fuck got, does I that? Got, I got like, the, like apparently he there's does. live streams of these guys opening. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a like, story. You know. So there was a the the hundred anniversary for Disneyland just happened, and they had they had cars come out like cards, and I bought two boxes and. They were like how three, much were they? One fifty a box. This is what you're doing with your money. <laughs> well, hold on. Okay. So I pulled a very rare card, and how it's, much is oh, the card? And what is the card? It's a it's a Mickey Mouse. It's a Mickey Mouse card. It's like one. It's very rare, and it's about three to four grand. Mm. So yeah, they may be funny. Like oh, you fucking Pokemon. So you have it in like a glass case. Yeah, plastic case or whatever. Do you wear gloves and shit when you're pulling? No, nah, I didn't. I, I haven't even touched it because I'm does, like it's, he does it in a bathtub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that shit that shit can get like Legos. I bought some shit that are hard to get, and I just keep them in in the crib. My right. girl says I have a fucking Lego store. It's funny that your interests <laughs> align with his nine year old. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where that's where I'll my, introduce you. You guys gonna know that, that, these motherfuckers would play for hours. They just be, <laughs> I have like the Thor hammer. <laughs> I have shit like that that I haven't even touched. You have a Thor hammer? Yeah. Oh, oh. Like, it's like, I don't know, like 7,200 7, pieces, but it's a Thor hammer, like when they try to lift it up in the movie. I have that fucking thing, but I get what he's saying. Like, like those shits cost Wait, so what, what, what did he ask for? What did he ask for? Exactly. Did he you ask you for the shit. Captain um, American shield? Uh, no, he... Um, <laughs> and how much was the cost? Like how much could these Legos? Okay, really cost? it was like eighty bucks. Okay, so the Thor hammer Legos was a hundred bucks. Oh, I thought that you were That's talking about something that was like five hundred. Yeah. Oh no, no 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 no! But I guess for it's eighty bucks for fucking Legos, like you're no, only but, gonna build once, and they're gonna fucking end up in. But a floor. but but there's like the Titanic and the Millennium Falcon, <laughs> and those shoes are like eight hundred dollars. It's a whole other. But the episode. Millennium Falcon, that's it's a whole big, other episode big. right now. <laughs> and then the Titanic is big. So yeah, when are we gonna set up a play day for your son? I know, right? You know what's funny though, like. That's how I connect with him because he likes Disney and Marvel and all that shit. And I'd be like, yo, have you gone to Disney to try out this You're a big shit? Marvel fan? Big, massive. Huge nerd, bro. So when you're working at night and you come home, do you try to make it home like, you know, when your kids like wake up or how do you... Because it's I'm, hard. Like when you're DJing I, uh, till like 2 a.m., you maybe go to sleep at 3 and then you, they, what, they wake up at 6. Yeah, I'm present for everything. Everything. That's so important to me. Like I'm there for everything. Like there's been times where like I'll fly out of a city that I'm DJing at, out of town. Yeah. I'll fly back in just for a soccer game and I'll fly right back out. Yeah, like, I've I'm, seen that happen. We were I'm like really? present yeah. for everything. If, wow. I, if, if I have the power to do it, I'm going to do it. That's you know, amazing. We don't yeah. miss, I don't miss soccer games, practices, wow. doctor's appointment, whatever. Like my, Bro, I my, love my that. kids are everything to me, you know? Oh, I love that. So it's just like- Can we um, give Chaos a hand for that <laughs> shit? <laughs> he deserves it, it, Lego. It, it's, uh, it's never easy. It's never <laughs> fucking easy. Obviously, there's nights where like, you know, my sidebar, fun. you know how sidebar goes. You know, it gets crazy in there. Like, yeah, but I, uh, I'll have my fun. But in the back of my head, I already know, like, yo, yeah, 6 a.m. comes, like, you better be up and ready. I was so. just talking to Neva about this. We were having this conversation mm -hmm. of just, like, having, like, loving your family and loving your wife and everything yeah. and, like, rushing to get home to see them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, having how that's more of a priority and, like, then continuing to party and yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually kind of, like, getting there to where it's starting to get uh, harder and harder to leave. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I want to be around more, you mm -hmm. know, hanging out with them and spending time with them. It, it actually, there's times where like, I really just don't want to leave the family. I just want to be there with them. Yeah. How many babies you got? Uh, four. Four babies. Yeah. Four kids. What is it? So. Nine? Four. That's a lot, brother. Yeah. Uh, He's busy. <laughs> nine, six, three. And I have a six month old. Six, six month old. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, obviously just family is just everything to me, man. Like, mm -hmm. There's nothing more important. Than that. But that's also why, like. I tell people like having kids was the best thing that could have happened to me as a DJ because once that happened, like this switch just kind of flipped and it went from me having a fun job to this is my career now and this is how I'm going to provide for my family. Once that happened, perspective kind of just changed and then I started really taking care of like my job, making, putting in all the effort, making sure I'm doing all the things to protect that career you know what i mean That's a good um when like uh, when you started doing bookings and i think you mm -hmm. have your own agency right like it's not mine <laughs> well <laughs> i mean I, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. Co you're a co-founder in an agency yes uh, or no, partner no, no, no. Or i i i came uh so the roster yeah. um i kind of like um 
came into that situation as a DJ. They brought me in, right? Like they kind of like. Uh, oh, so okay, this, okay, okay, okay. So, I, I misunderstood. Yeah. That. I didn't. So I'll, I'll tell you. So uh, this uh, there was this team, this uh, promotion team in San Diego, Party Naked. That's how they started just doing promotions, right? Yeah. Nightclubs. It got to a point where like uh, the venues were asking them to book DJs, right? So what they ended up doing is they created an agency. They created a team, right? The roster, and they were bringing in guys from all over the city, including mm-hmm. Shadow, Shadow Man was actually one of the first ones. He came all the way from LA to to join that team. At first, like I, I thought about it, I was like, ah, oh, you know, let me, let me see what's up. Because at that time, I was kind of, um, I felt like I hit, I hit a wall as far as like what I was being booked for. Like I needed to like explain find something. Like I felt like I had, I was doing all the things I could for myself, but I needed like an extra push to get over a certain hump, right, and to start getting into a certain venues. Um, they came along, and I was like, well, they're doing all the fucking venues that I want to be doing, right? Right. So um, at first. I, I thought about joining and then like they came at me and they were like, I think the, the terms weren't like what I wanted. So yeah. I, I passed on it. But then a few months later, they came back to me and they kind of like restructured everything we were talking about. And at that time, I was actually seeking out an agency. I was looking for, I, I looked at so many different teams and these guys were just starting off. Nobody knew anybody on the team. No disrespect to anybody, but it was all fairly brand new guys. I was going to be the only one that came in who had somewhat of a, a name in the city. So my kind of like uh, situation was, do I want to go somewhere and just be another number, right? Somewhere, somewhere established, or do I want to go somewhere where I can help create something? Mm-hmm. And that was a lot more appealing to me. So I joined the roster and, you know, uh, some, something that's come up in the past, uh, you know, shit wasn't popping off right away. You know, I, I was still doing like the local bars and like dive bars and whatnot, just taking any gigs that, that, that I could. But over time, we really started building. We got a lot of momentum, started building a, a really good team and it turned into something really fucking special. And now uh, we still have a team. Things have changed a little bit over the pandemic as everything has, but yeah, uh, yeah. we still have a really fucking good team. And um, that was um, eight, nine years ago. And then that really elevated my career, really? joining that team. Can we can we talk a yeah. little bit about cuz I feel like there's a lot of DJs mm-hmm. that are maybe listening. Yeah. And it's and this hump that you're talking about. Yeah. How do you know when you've hit a wall? You know, like how do you know when this is like you know, I I need to do something drastic or I need to make a change. For me in yeah, particular. Yeah. What no, was I, the wall? What was your wall? I Actually, you know what? I ask all of you guys this. Yeah. What was the wall for you that you hit where you were like, "Yo, I have to make a change?" So I've, I've hit this wall several times, and mm-hmm. it's when I start feeling comfortable. When The moment I start feeling comfortable and it feels like a little easy, that's the moment I'm like, yo, like, let's switch the shit. Wait, wait, but why, why in your head, when <laughs> something's going good, does it trigger? Oh, like, man. Wh- why, why does it trigger something bad? I'm still trying to figure that out. I really? Go, uh, yeah, I go to therapy all the time, and I talk to, this about, uh, to my therapist about this. I'm like, I don't know like, why, but like, something in me, I'm like, yo, like, I want more. You know, I, uh, again, the chip on the shoulder, like I want more. I'm not satisfied with, you know, this, like I want more, you know, I feel like I deserve it. Mm. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's it. I don't know if that's I, it. I, I don't know either. I mean, like, like I said, I'm still trying to figure it out. Is it yeah. because, yeah. you know, when you're having like a great, like just stride and you're kind of expecting the downfall. So you'd rather go up than down. That might be it too. It could be a lot of different. It might things, be a you know? couple of things. Yeah. It because, also it, it yeah. also might be the fact that like the only time you've ever been motivated, and this 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 is kind of almost the case for me, mm-hmm. where like the only times I'm really motivated is when I'm at my worst, what? when like <laughs> when shit's like at the like you know when I feel like <laughs> I, I've got I'm rock bottom. I, I, so I, like when I'm rock bottom, I'm like yeah. yo. Like stay away from me because I'm like I'm the hustle mode goes crazy, so like I feel like I need to like create. I've been there. Yeah, I've been, I've been at rock but bottom like several some, times. Yeah, but when you're rock bottom, you're like mm-hmm. the most motivated. No, I prefer know? to have my back against the wall. You know yeah, I, mean? I prefer that. That's yeah. yeah. I but then, be, but then it's yeah. hard because it's like as you as you grow and it's it's like sometimes. In some cases, some people can become self destructive yeah. mm-hmm. because they want to hit rock bottom again so they get feel motivated. Right. Right, they right. don't know how to be motivated when they're comfortable. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. Now we're getting like, we're a bunch of fucking, I'm an idiot like trying to yeah, no, break no, no. down <laughs> like, oh, psychology shit. shit. <laughs> but I, like, I think about it a lot sometimes because I, I think about where my passions lie. Right. And then I'm wondering, like, it, is my passion the hustle and trying to get out from being rock bottom? How do I stay motivated and inspired like by being 
right. you know, comfortable or whatever. Mm-hmm. So like I, I look at it sometimes because I look at like big artists, like I don't know, that is a horrible example, but like let's say for example, like a Kanye West. Right. I feel like he needs sometimes he needs like a lot of trauma and a lot of <laughs> shit to to prove everyone wrong. Yeah. If everyone's just believing everything he's saying, it's just like yeah, you know some people just react differently. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah. he has a bunch of other problems yeah. besides that, but I, <laughs> but I kind of <laughs> I kind of look at that because sometimes I see a bunch of dudes that I look up to who are like who are killing it, and mm-hmm. then they do self destructive shit, and I'm like, why are they being self destructive? Right. You know, I mean, I mean, for me, the, the motivation is super easy for me. Obviously, the family. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. like yeah, that's that's easy to me. I mean, I I can uh, I'll do all the things. I'll work as hard as I need to because my kids. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's the motivation. That's all I need. I have yeah, kids. Yeah. You know, so it's easy for me. But other people kind of do need that, right? Yeah. They need to be pushed. So, uh, and that's like another kind of like role I'm taking on. Like I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out like you know how to how to like figure out people like mentally right like what what buttons can i push as far as like the younger djs mm. like how can i get them to where i need them to be is it kind of like how to be more constructive with your criticism without like kind of bringing them down yeah like have them stay motivated it's like how, right? how can i tap into every single person obviously everybody's different so it's like how can i tap into that person and bring right. out their best that's mm-hmm. what I'm, I'm looking for all the time you know what i mean um but i think the best way to do do that as well is to lead by example yeah you know what i mean it is so it's like I, I gotta show them like this is how you do it. Like you gotta, you, I gotta work twice as hard as they do. You know, consistency too. Mm-hmm. Just always being consistent. Yeah. You know, never being late. Always having it on time. And yeah. yeah, it's it's so important when you're leading. It's like you can't have a sick day, right? Nah. You can't have an off day. No, nah, I don't know. Yeah, how long have you been doing therapy? Um, coming up on three years almost. Three yeah. years. Wow. It's so you doing ever. therapy during the pandemic? Uh, a little bit. Uh, a little bit after the pandemic. Um. It was uh, one of those things that was very much needed, right? Um, obviously, anybody that knows me knows my story a little bit. Um, a few years ago, um, my daughter passed away, yeah. right? Young. Uh, toughest shit ever, right? <clears throat> um, toughest thing anybody could ever go through. Um, and I needed, to, I needed to go and figure a lot of things out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, going to therapy has, I feel like, uh, unlocked so much potential for me. Like, I, 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 I move differently now. When my head is good, like, yo, I can, I can do, I can do so much more now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, uh, I'm actually really glad that I'm here, just to kind of like spread that message. Like, yo, go if you if you if you need help, go get it. Like, yeah. it's, it's good. It's so helpful. You know what I mean. I, I remember we had like a lunch together, and we were talking about therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you know, we I think we were talking about just I, I started therapy, I think, mm-hmm. and you and you were doing it, and I we talked about it for maybe an hour or so. Right. But it, yeah, it really is so important, mm-hmm. and it, yeah. it you realize there was so many. It's the I keep I always say this, but it's just you have all of these feelings, mm-hmm. but you don't know where it stems from. Yeah. You have all these thoughts, and you don't know where it stems from, and then therapy just kind of helps you connect the dots. Exactly. Cause you're like, oh, where did this? You know, you just think like, oh, this is who I am. I'm, ju- I'm just this person. Yeah. And just, then you realize, yeah. no, 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 I'm like this because this happened. And then, oh shit, like, now that I know that, I, I can deal with it and right. I can control it. You yeah. know, like I can control whatever yeah. urges or uh, that I have. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's the best thing in the world, uh, especially for me. Like, given how much I do, you know, not just a DJ and just a family. I I, I have other, you know. Um, professions i guess you could say mm-hmm. um i need to be at my best always in order to be able to execute everything all the time uh i need to have a clear head i need to be able to go in there every single week and work on me you know what i mean if i'm not at my best you know like it's not gonna work out yeah know? yeah yeah so um just going into therapy weekly just like talking about it doesn't always have to be like some groundbreaking you're in tears kind of shit like sometimes you just go in and just vent you know what i mean but talking out loud speaking about it speaking about it, it like it helps so much it it, it uh, it's really changed my life for the better. And when you're doing it weekly, sometimes you feel like you're trying to look for problems or yeah, issues. Yeah, it just became redundant. At and then I felt like very whiny, you know, like I was just bitching about Same. little things, right? Same. Like <laughs> yeah, I, feel, yeah. I, I tell this to my therapist all the time. I tell him like, like, fuck, like I feel like I'm just in here just bitching about shit. Like, yeah, yeah. like this shit's not that serious. It's not, like, what it's the not fuck that serious. Yeah, so yeah. I took a little break because I was uh-huh. like, I'm, I'm like overanalyzing <laughs> everything and I already have a problem with overanalyzing. Yeah, same. But what really helped me is that when I did have serious issues, mm-hmm. 
I, it made me look inward more than outward. It wasn't like that's a fucking, you know, these guys or this person or this, this whatever. It was like, oh, I can't control them. I can only control yeah. myself. That's exactly the same. And that's the best thing that ever happened because like, oh, like I just don't, I already know how that person's going to be. Mm -hmm. So why am I expecting something different from them? Yep. So I already like, I can control how I react. I can control <laughs> my access to that person. Yeah. Right. So it's like you, you start creating boundaries yeah. and you start realizing yeah. like this person's worth my time. This person's worth some of my time. This person, I, I tell you know, people all handshake. the time, uh, aside from my family, the most valuable things in my life are my yeah. time and my energy. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I just don't Amen. give them to anybody. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Amen. I'm very careful about that. My time and my energy are everything to me. So, yeah. yeah. I just want to tell you, like, uh, I'm really sorry what happened to your daughter. Yeah. And it was, I don't want, you know, it, it was, I hate to bring it up, but it was, mm -hmm. it, to me, I will never forget it because it was one of those things that actually affected me mm -hmm. um, deeply. Uh, shit. Go ahead, bro. Take your time. Yeah. Um, she, was, she was such an angel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your situation, I think, uh, you know, you lost her. She was such an angel. And I, and I remember you couldn't work. And uh, you set up a GoFundMe. And it, it really affected me because uh, I was just like, I just thought it was just a horrible thing to happen. Mm -hmm. And I realized like, yo, there's no, there's no like insurance. There's no one to protect these DJs, mm -hmm. you know, from something traumatic like this. Like, I don't know what kind of health insurance you and your family had. Yeah. And it was so tough, and I really felt for you. I, I remember that happening and affecting me. And I never forgot it because, you know, what what touched me was like all these DJs helped out. Yeah. And it's like you know when you go through something like that and you lose somebody or you you maybe have like a health scare or something happens like, you know, like we have to set up GoFundMe's for DJs. Yeah. You know, yeah. help each other. And it was, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I I for me I, it always stuck there. There's a couple things that stuck there that I always think about when I think about. DJs going through stuff and like, you know, creatives going through stuff and how mm -hmm. there's, there's really nothing. There's no safety net. There's no safety net, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Um, and you know, it was just a horrible thing that, uh, you know, that, that happened. Yeah. And I'm so sorry it, about it. Yeah. That. No, um, you know, obviously it's like nothing you could ever prepare for. No. Nothing mm -hmm. you would ever want. I would never wish that on anybody ever. But one thing, I mean, there's no positives. Right. But certain things that I did take away, uh, especially like what I talked about earlier, like always just kind of just being like by myself. Right. I'm a yeah. lone ranger. That happening, man, like the entire industry came out to support me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, I had I had no idea how much support I had until that happened. Like really everybody came and then it just kind of changed my perspective in so many different ways. Like people who in my head I thought I had beef with. No, that shit, that shit wasn't that important. They they came out, bro. Like people were showing up, literally coming out, man. It's just um, it changed my perspective in so many different ways. But like, man, I had never felt that support, and now I feel, I still feel indebted because because uh, of the way people really showed up for me. You know, when yeah, all yeah. that happened, literally everybody, everybody, the entire industry came out for me, and uh, man, I I feel in, indebted. Like I can't ever. I don't feel like I'll ever be able to repay these people, you know? Mm -hmm. Nobody had to do anything, you know? But they did. And that, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that. So it's just like, it's another thing that I carry with me. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's why, like, I, I'm so, it's so important to me to, to put out a quality product in everything I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Explain a little bit. Um, I, it's just, yeah, I just feel like I owe them so much for being there for me and my family too, right? Like, um, I've always like tried to keep both worlds separate. I live two different lives. I've mm -hmm. tried to keep them very separate. This was the first time where every, everything kind of came together. You right. know what I mean? Where um, like the was, nightlife industry yeah, and your family. Met. And it was yeah. very uncomfortable for me too because I don't like asking for help. I don't like, you know, yeah. I don't like that's, people. That's yeah. the tough thing, right? Yeah, so um, I've always been, very, I'm still very private. My my private life is my private life. I mm -hmm. don't ever like, kind of like, uh, I don't broadcast my private shit, right? Yeah. This was um, something where I felt, I've never felt more vulnerable in my life. It was like everybody could just see me at my worst. And that shit was, it was super uncomfortable. But uh, when you're in that situation, um, like that vulnerable, um, 
you expect the worst, but man, everybody you're just showing love. That was it. That's one thing I, t- I took away. I'm like, damn, like everybody, everybody came out to support me. So it's like now it's like every time I'm DJing, it's like I have to represent for those venues and those people who put me in those positions, right? And they trust me right. with this job. Like I got to go all out for them. This is my way of paying them back. I'll never be able to pay it back, but I got to go and represent every single yeah. time. You know it's, what I mean? It's almost like, you know, this this industry looked out for you. Yeah. And the least you could do mm-hmm. is do your best, the best fucking job that you can because, mm-hmm. you know, I guess when times get rough, the industry is going to look out for you. Yeah. You know? Um, and that, that's like why I, I talk about with like the younger DJs, why intangibles matter so much. I tell people all the time, like, you can have all the fucking talent in the world, but if you don't have your head right, like if you're not a proper person, if you're not just a good, good, solid person, yeah, it's not going to take you anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that consistency, being able to show up like that and represent for wh- whoever you're working for, mm-hmm. that's going to carry. That's what's you know will be sustainable. That's why I've been able to do this for so long at this kind of level, and I still have. I don't even feel like I've hit my stride yet completely. So it's just like you're still young, man. You're <laughs> young-ish, young-ish. young-ish. Um, so yeah, and that was actually another one of the, the important lessons for me early, early on. Obviously, I, I named all the DJs that were like kind of looking out for me, and I remember like venting to them about how frustrated it was that I didn't feel like I was, you know, like I wasn't getting what I thought I deserved, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was, it was so much frustration. I was like, yo, like I feel like I'm dope. Like, why am I not getting that spot? Why am I not doing this? Why not? And um, they, they were they would always tell me like yo look at everybody who's on right now how old are they you know yeah yeah they're older right they've been doing this for a while it mm-hmm. takes time you just got to be fucking patient and I'm the most impatient person in the world so that was like a tough pill to swallow but yeah I feel like finally I'm starting to get there yeah you know that's what I mean? interesting that's that's funny I was just talking to uh, one of my homies about this and we were talking about all the DJs that like hit their stride early mm-hmm. and blew up early. Like they didn't sustain mm-hmm. that career, and it was like you know, like they yeah. just really like blew up and they fizzled out and they disappeared because we were like naming all these DJs that were like fucking huge <laughs> in the two thousands and the two thousand tens, and then we were like, yo, like where the fuck are they? Like what? What it? You know what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. It's it's almost like when you reach when you hit like that pinnacle so early, like where are you gonna go from there? Right. So mm-hmm. that. Being consistent isn't even enough anymore because you were just so high. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if this makes any sense. No, but it does. But you're better off having this like kind of steady incline, incline yeah. mm-hmm. than than just like so hitting having it, it yeah. happen right away. Yeah, it's, I always felt that way about my career. Like I felt like I'm glad I was able to do it when I at the age I was able to do it at that age instead of doing it when I was younger. Because like I that was my biggest fear. If I would have blew up at a young age. I would have fucking fizzled out right away. Is that really your fear? Really? It was at the time, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, like, the f- crazy thing never is, like, I hear you now, and I'm like, this is, like, the best I've heard you. Like, you sound the best that I've ever heard now. Mm-hmm. Like, you just, like, you know, if it's possible, like, motherfuckers, you... Yeah, I don't know, man. I still just, getting... I no, think I, I, I'm still working. I guess I'm still working on my... <laughs> on my try. <laughs> on my skills. <laughs> <laughs> on my skills. On my skills, yeah. No, no, but I think it's... I mean, I think that's the testament, though, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the diligence and the... That that we're all like we still you and know. I still love DJing. It's like, yeah, I think I think you sound thank probably you, I mean better than ever nowadays. Yeah, like thank you, man. I don't know about that, but <laughs> not for real. Let's make out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I talk about this all the time, though. It's funny because it's like I, I said, you know, I've been doing this for so long. Yeah. But probably like two years ago is when I felt like I finally became the DJ. I was. I, I, I'm, I'm meant to be, you know what I mean? Like, I finally understand things differently. Like, I'm, uh, I, I can, I'm comfortable walking into any room. I, mean, I know I'm going to do what I, what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it took me that fucking long. And that's something that the younger DJs don't want to hear. They don't want to hear the word wait, you know? They want to blow up right away. Yeah. Um, it, it, and it's, it, it sucks because sometimes, like, that's the only advice I can give. Uh, about a year, I'm going to put him on bus, but about a year and a half ago, Nopa Slaps. Yeah. Fucking love that guy, dude. 
Um, great dude, great DJ. He he hit me up out of nowhere. He's like, yo, he's like, you got like time for a phone call, and we we're talking. And he was like, kind of like, explaining his frustrations too. Like, he, this is with uh, with uh, R&B and ribs already kind of popping off. Yeah, yeah. And he was just explaining his frustra uh, his frustrations to me about like how you know he's like, dude, like I feel like I'm dope, but like you know I'm not getting those bookings yet, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, I told him, I was like, dude, like you're not doing anything wrong. I'm yeah. Just, I'm like, you just gotta wait. The right you know? people haven't heard you. Uh, yeah, I'm like, it's gonna happen, you know. Um, look at him now. Yeah, he's killing it. Everything. Like, I, I am so happy for that. Not, not only is he a dope DJ, he's just a good, solid dude. Yeah, you know what right. I mean. Great. So everything, everything coming his way, he, he deserves. You know, he earned that shit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just like, but sometimes, like, I, I felt bad because like he was reaching out to me, hoping I would give him some like life changing advice. First of all, I'm like, why the fuck are you coming to me? But yeah. um, I felt bad because the only thing I could tell him is like, wait. I felt like I kind of let him down in that moment as far as like not giving him like something of substance, right? Mm -hmm. But the message there was just, you just gotta I mean, he man. gets it now. Right? Oh, he gets it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's my guy. But um, um, that's just kind of like what it is for a lot of guys right now. You just kind of gotta wait, you know? Your time's gonna come. I, th just... I, I think the funny thing is that I think, uh, you know, a lot of the, the younger DJs want it to happen like now, yeah. now. <clears throat> but the, the thing is that like what's gonna happen after if it happens now? Mm -hmm. like what's the next stage like of of djing that you're gonna hit mm -hmm. if it's like if you're not here to be a dj for the next 20 30 years what do you think is gonna happen like i'm gonna be a dj for five years and then act or like i'm gonna <laughs> like i'm gonna you know what i'm saying like i'm gonna blow up and then i'm gonna do yeah. acting and then i'm gonna like me you know write my own scripts or like <laughs> where do you think this is gonna lead i think and i think that's the difference Maybe with how young people look at DJing now, mm -hmm. whereas like, I think I've I've said this before. Our generation just wanted to make if we could make a dollar off of DJing, mm -hmm. we were like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. this is that's, it, that's just not enough. <laughs> it's just not enough for these um, kids now. Uh, it's something that I see nowadays, like with the younger DJs, they've got you know other careers. DJing isn't their only thing. They actually have careers and shit like that. So DJing is just a side thing right now. You know what I mean? So that's different. Like for guys like, um, like for example, me and Dynamic. Like one of the reasons we were so hungry back then is because this was it. We didn't have no backup plan. We weren't in college or anything like that. Like this was it. We were gonna make this shit work, or you know, nothing was gonna happen. Does yeah. your son want to be a, a DJ? Or does he have any uh, interest? No, no. He loves music, but I mean, I don't push him into anything. Yeah, I just kind of let him figure out his own thing. Would you want your son to be a DJ? How would you feel if your son was like, ah, I want to start <laughs> DJing? I don't know. I feel like I'd be, um, I might, <laughs> I might be too tough on him. Like in, yeah, in a yeah. sense, like I, like my expectations, like for him would be too high, you know? So yeah, I kind of yeah. wouldn't want that for him mm -hmm. yeah, at all. Let, let him do, go do something else. Do something else, right? I would something think. Else. I, <laughs> anything else, seriously. Do, I would think like, anything no, else. like this industry will eat you up and chew you up. It's like, no, dad will eat you up and chew you up. Man. Yeah. This mix is not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have my standards for you, for yeah, you know. That's a tough my situation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, 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 I mean, um, just in general, like I have high expectations for my son. You know, mm -hmm. so um, I mean, I'm not like pressing him too hard or anything, or not like you know, I'm not that dad either, right? But I mean, if he were to ever get into DJing, like, uh, and then you know, all his uncles are DJs and shit like that, you know, <laughs> like yo, they're all I hang out with like nothing but dope DJs, so it's like yo. You better come correct. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. <laughs> at, at, yeah. At, at, what, at what point did you start, like, mm -hmm. on the side, like, because you, you're doing bookings for multiple venues, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. at, at, at what point did you start, like, going into this and venturing off to doing <clears throat> bookings? Because not only are you doing bookings at Sidebar, <clears throat> you're, doing, you're doing El Chingon. Mm -hmm. And El Chingon is, like, killing oh. it as well, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole monster. You hopped on super early into that, right? Yeah, so... um. I, I've actually known the owners, well, one of the owners for, uh, like, I want to say 15 years now. El Chingon? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, one of the owners of El Chingon. I've been working with him for, like, 15 years, opened up several venues for him. Mm -hmm. um, but I was there from the beginning, uh, not just as a DJ, but also uh, I created that whole brand. Like, I'm a graphic designer on the side, too. Everything you see over there, like, that was oh, shit. that's all me. Oh, you, know? you did all that shit? Yeah. Are you, are you still doing flyers and shit? Or no. no? 
Nah, I had so you were doing flyers and yeah, everything? Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, like, it's, it's kind of cool. Like, not a lot of people know about this, but it's like, you know, I started, uh, I actually taught myself how to do graphic design. Yeah. I started, uh, I taught myself off YouTube tutorials just to do, do my own shit when yeah. I was coming up. Same here. A lot of DJs had to do yeah. that, yeah. In YouTube University, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, um, they wouldn't give us a flyer. You have to create your own yeah. flyers. You have to create your own uh, flyers for parties and shit. And know? it was kind of cool because then it's just like, I forget, I don't know, like somebody caught word or wind that I did it and they asked me for a job and then it just kind of like, kind of started like becoming a thing. Wow. And then, Wait, uh, how much were you charging for your, for your, I'm not even going to disclose those numbers. <laughs> 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 it's not a lie. I am so mad at, at like how much I charge for some of these things. Cause like, he was yeah. like Walmart designer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> no, but it is, it, it's kind of cool. Like, uh, especially in San Diego, I can walk up and down the gas lamp. I'm like, Oh, I did that. I did that. Really? I did that. Wow, yeah. man. Impressive. What other yeah. venues did you do? Um, well, like, well, well, for, for specifically for like El Chingon, they also have Havana, which is like a Cuban restaurant next door. Right, right, right. right. Ovation, mm-hmm. like, so I've done so many different things for them. Like Sunburn, when the, when the, the, the pool party was coming oh, yeah, off. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Bar, mm-hmm. I created that whole thing too. Like that wow. brand was on me. So it's just like, that's just kind of like a, a side thing. But it, and it just became t- uh, one of those things where it, like, it was taking up too much of my time and not making me enough money. And I didn't, I'm, I really never really liked it. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I like being creative, but that, that just wasn't for me bookings and shit like that i got into it with with like working with a roster um uh, my guy kevin who who runs shout out to kev shout out yeah, to kev <laughs> that's the fucking guy mm-hmm. he's a legend anybody who knows him knows he's a legend but um uh i was fortunate enough to where he would bring me into the room when he was booking things uh he would bring me into the conversation even see see me on emails that i had no business being part of like he was he was putting me in those situations and i'm just learning 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 uh when we were running the summer pool party um I would be his point guy with DJs. Like I'm the one that's bringing in the DJs. I'm, I'm setting up the, the equipment. I'm running the stage, etc. And this is, this is the sunburn party at, uh, at the hard rock. Hard rock, rock Hotel. Hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is after intervention. Sunburn kind of became a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was putting me in those situations and it was like, I was getting those mental reps and I was picking up on everything that he was doing. Right. Uh, fast forward all these years. Um, <clears throat> now, like I'm running my own thing, you know, as far as like uh, doing the bookings for, for venues, and I feel comfortable in any situation. Like he prepared me for that. Like without me knowing, he was kind of grooming me for that already. Mm-hmm. And so now it's kind of cool. Like, um, you know, I do bookings for one of the best clubs in, you know, in the country. I think Sidebar and then El Chingon as well. You know, mm-hmm. um, and it's man, it's, it's like I feel like that's my next step. That's what I want to go to next. How do you handle the bookings? Like, how do you know when to put what DJ where and how do and then how do you hear a DJ and be like, oh, that's a Friday guy or that's our Saturday guy or this is the guy we want on a big weekend or, and blah blah blah. Um, like, how do you how do you figure those things out? The first uh, the the first thing for me is like, and then I'm I, and at the same time, I, I kind of want to know like exactly. What is the club asking for? Like, how does the information and communication going? Like, hey, this dude was rocking it, or like, hey, this guy brought actual like people or like tables in, and blah blah blah. Like, uh, well, well, the first thing for me, uh, well, that I tell people who who are trying to like book their venues is like, yeah. know the venue. You need to know the in and out of everything. Mm-hmm. Understand the venue. Put your ego aside. Like, just like really, who's doing what? Be involved in every conversation possible talk to everybody in that in that on that staff i literally i don't take everybody's opinion right like and like really like um put a lot of value in it but i do want to hear them i do want to hear the opinions of everybody in that venue i'm going in there even on nights where i'm not working there i'm going in there asking everybody who do you like who do you not like what do you what do you feel once you're in 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 tune with what the venue really needs and Mm -hmm. who's doing what in there and you understand um you start understanding who's fit for what. Um, one of the hardest things too is like being able to separate being a homie yeah. and being an employee, right? Um, I have a lot of talented DJ friends, a lot of talented DJ friends. Not all of them are getting in. You know what I mean? Just because you're my friend doesn't guarantee you a spot in there. Mm-hmm. Do you get well, a lot of your friends hitting you up asking you, can <laughs> like, you get yeah, hey, yeah, in? It, 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 it is tough because it's like, um, um, how do you tell your boy that he's not cut out for it? You know what I mean? It's like so you have to have that. But do you say it like that? Or how do you say, how do you say it? <sighs> I'm not gonna say how I say it yeah. because then people are gonna it? know I'm tell talking about. Tell us on about camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. I was talking to somebody at an agency and right. they were telling me that somebody bombed. 
And I was like, did you tell them? I was like, did you tell them? They're like, no. And I'm like, why would you not tell them? And they're like, we, I don't think they need to know. If my agent isn't telling me that and they're right. keeping it from me, then I'm just like walking around delusional. You'll right? keep doing what you like, doing. I'm killing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shit. I mean, that's not your job though, right? I mean, uh, I mean to tell them that. It's not or my it job. Or it is kind of your I, job. I, I don't know. It, it is. <laughs> it is. Um, everybody that I work with, I value and I respect. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tell them, right? Yeah. I'm going to tell them exactly not what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's one. That's one of the things that I, I think DJs need to do a little bit more is just be completely honest with themselves. Like, really have a conversation with yourself, like about what kind of DJ you are and what kind of DJ you want to be. Right? I think everybody. Wait, expand just, on that. What do you mean? Do I, there's some DJs who have this what delusional yeah, so, 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 idea of what they are? They, they kill it yeah. every night. So uh, this is kind of a. Uh, it's very complex for me to explain, but I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. Do, I'll do my best. So for me personally, I'm going to speak on my on my thing. Uh, like probably like five, six, seven years ago, like I just wanted to be like in the biggest rooms and I was chasing gigs. I had no business fucking chasing. I had, I was just chasing gigs just to be part. Of it. I was playing like Miami music week. Why? I'm not an EDM DJ. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was just chasing any gig I could cause I just wanted to be on. Right. Well, what do you think that is though? In, in your idea, that was, that was the pinnacle, yeah, I had to, the, the top, yeah. but it's like, but if I really like had an honest conversation with myself, like in my house, DJ, no. So why the fuck am I doing that? Right. You know? Why am I chasing that? Why am I going and doing that? Like I'm setting myself up for failure. And sure enough, like I would chase gigs, like some high profile venues and I would get in. But when I got in, I had so much pressure that I was putting on myself to, to, to like really do a good job and I would bomb. And then I would never come back. I was actually hurting myself by doing that. So instead of doing that, like I had, uh, a really honest conversation with myself. Um, I, this also happened after you know everything with my daughter. But I was like, where, wh- wh- "What kind of DJ do I want to be? What, what do I want to yeah. go with this? Right? What are you chasing? Yeah. What are you chasing? Right? What is the, the actual so, goal? So yeah. you see it, right? And then you kind of like build out a plan. What do I need to do to get there? Like really honest conversation. What do I need to do? And am I willing to do it and commit to that? Yeah. If the answer is no. Then kind of drop that a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? For me. Like I see, like the the big fucking DJs doing like Axis and 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 Live and all these all these fucking venues. Like, but what are they doing? They're killing it with the marketing. You know, they're they're out there. They're doing all this shit. Like, there's so many different things you could do to like put yourself in a in a position to succeed. For me, when I start thinking about like what I need to do to get there, the one constant that kept coming up is that it's going to take and it's going to require a lot of time and effort. That's going to take away from my family. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My family is way more important. So it's like, if I'm not willing to do that and take away time from my family, then I'm not going to get there. So, okay. So readjust, realign what you're really shooting for. What's really attainable. Right. And then go for that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to do the big thing. Not everybody's going to get there. That's the reality of it. You know? Okay. So it's just like, be honest with yourself. You know? And that way, when you do that, you're coming in with a completely different perspective. And I feel you're putting your, your best foot forward every single time. Now that I, I kind of like now my my perspective is different. I don't have that pressure anymore. I'm going to places where they want me because I'm just doing me now. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not trying to do something else. I'm not. I'm not. You know. I don't. Want, I'm not. There's nothing fake about what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I'm not the social media guy. My social media game sucks, bro. It's just fucking terrible. It's just. It's just what it is. I'm not. That's just not me, though. You know what I mean? You're never gonna see me on Instagram like, "Yo, is your boy chaos?" Blah, blah, blah. Like that's not me. If I did that shit, everybody who knows me like, "What the fuck are you doing, man?" It's just whack. You know, that's not you. You know, that's not you. It's it's not me. So there's nothing fake about what I do. So now when I walk into into rooms, like I feel very comfortable about myself and about my skill set, and I can, I can be at my best. Yeah. yeah. It, it's funny, like. Uh, sometimes people go after these these goals, and they think it's gonna like change the trajectory of their life. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really about the journey and where you find yourself. Yeah. And you know the the main important thing that you just said that I've been I've been you know I've realized this like the past few years is like I'm gonna go where I'm valued. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I have no place in going somewhere. Like why am I gonna try to like go somewhere and convince somebody that I, yeah. I'm a value? Mm-hmm. They're either gonna see it. Or they're not going to see it. Right. Mm-hmm. And the only way they're going to really see it is if I'm doing it <laughs> somewhere where I'm valued. Yeah. You know, and they're going to be like, oh, shit. You know, that, you know, he's actually doing his thing. So, and they're going to be like, wow, that I'm, I'm seeing him in his element. 
and then like maybe he can do that shit over here. Yeah, and it, and it's and it's uh, for me at least it's so much more rewarding now. Yeah, you know where when I'm asked to come to a venue, like man, I'm like yo, that was because I did my thing, you know, and they they value that and they want me there. Like mm-hmm. it feels so much better, man, as opposed to me chasing people down and trying to convince them to book me. Like people are coming to me. But also, like a no isn't like you're whack. Sometimes a no is just yeah, like, no, not. No. Sometimes mm-hmm. a no is like not right now. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, uh, I mean, like for example, like sidebar. Um, I'm so proud of like uh, the the DJ rotation we have over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and they kill it. The guys that I have in there, they kill it. And uh, it, I get hit up all the time for you know to book DJs and whatnot. And a lot of the times, the 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 situation is like. It's not that I don't want to book you. It's like our guys are just killing it. Like you know, I don't, I don't have spots. You have a know good rotation, I mean? yeah. Yeah, the rotations. There, if it's not broke, you know, why fix it? I fix it. Yeah. So it's just like a lot of times it's like not right now. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, just yeah. really not right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. El Chingon has multiple locations. Yeah. Yep. How do you handle that? How do you handle booking for out of town? <laughs> and then like, are you doing the same thing where you're studying this other city? Mm-hmm. Try, well, and, and look, luckily for me, the way it's kind of set up, it's um. Shadow Man runs Texas, so he handles Fort Worth, and I handle San Diego. It's a lot easier like that. We we we're in tune to the market, so mm-hmm. we kind of know uh, what each venue needs. Um, and it's it and it's. <laughs> Wait, so there's three locations? Two, there's two, two, one more coming. Oh, one more coming. Yeah. Wow. So um, but e- but they're both very different. It's the same brand, same energy, and stuff like that, but it's very different. Both locations are very different from each other. Wait, so what are the Texas locations again? Uh, Fort Worth, and then Dallas is coming soon. How different is Dallas and Fort Worth? <laughs> really? Bro, yeah. Fort Worth is crazy. That's one of my. That's what Sidebar is to you. That's what El Chingo and Fort Worth is to me. Mm-hmm. Really? Like the, the the staff is dope. Like the vibe is dope. The DJs there are dope. Everyone's so family orientated. It's, it's it's a fucking great time over there. Mm-hmm. What's the difference in the in the clientele of the music from Fort Worth to Dallas? <laughs> I would think it would be somewhat similar, but it's completely different. So yeah, so the Fort Worth location, like yeah, it is a college town. It's like yeah. it's. I feel like it's a little bit younger. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a little bit more. <laughs> Um, reckless, yeah. a little ratchet, yeah, yeah, a little, yeah, a little bit more ratchet, right? A little uh, young, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit young. Uh, San Diego, it's like your um, whoever's just, in town, whoever's like it's, yeah. a t- it's pretty much. But I can't yeah. lie, both fucking places go hard and yeah. party really hard. But that TCU college town, Eric, it, it's just boss to the wall, bro. From yeah. the moment you get in there, oh, they go the hard car, over there, yeah. And you yeah, just gotta, yeah. you gotta start hitting TCU? them right away. TCU, TCU. Yeah. That's like a big college. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were the national like football championship right? last year, I believe. Yeah. But um, big fucking deal like that. That and then especially the way it's it's kind of like a lot of kids bar hop around there. Is yeah. it Sixth Street. I'm that sorry. whole yeah, that yeah, whole block is like filled street. with bars and shit. It's, it's almost like uh, like Scottsdale. You know how like everything's like right, wide right, open, right, stuff right, like that? right. It's very similar situation over there. But it's a fucking wonderful. It's just time. a rager. You get you got like a, a a good set of residencies in the San Diego Elching on. Yeah. Like you got the Wednesdays with Scooter, yeah. right? Dynamic guys Thursday night. Dyna- Dynamic on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the the one thing I love is like I love going to a city and I love checking industry nights. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's less and less industry nights yeah. nowadays, right? When you yeah. go to a city, mm-hmm. even in Vegas, it's kind of like you don't it's know a little, what it is. It's a little weird just because you don't know who's gonna be there. Yeah. It's like even if there's a, a Monday at Jewel. Or Tuesday at Omnia yeah. or whatever. It's like you don't know who's going to be It's a different DJ. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like if I'm in San Diego, I know Scooter yeah. that Ching on on Wednesday. Yeah. I, I really miss that uh, do, consistency, man. right? Yeah. Like so, like when you're when you're doing these bookings, do you, do you are you trying to find a weekly industry party like Sidebar? I, I know I don't even do they have an, uh, they don't have a weekly industry party right uh, Wednesday nights Wednesday nights Wednesday, Wednesday nights yeah but it's uh, more local talent like like you said like uh, industry nights like I, I try to stay local mm-hmm. you know what I mean um, because of course it's, it's industry you you want uh, the guys who know you know the industry right uh, the local industry you want those guys so you're rotating local DJs mm-hmm. there so you I have a question yeah is it better to rotate local DJs or to find one 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 DJ who can really set the tone for what needs to get played in that room weekly and and do it uh for me i I like to just rotate guys really Uh, i'd rather i'd rather have that is that what venues want because they just want a different marketing thing yeah i I think venues want a variety of things uh you also the one thing um that i kind of i i i want to stay away from one guy is because when you do that guys get comfortable 
Do they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys get real comfortable, very complacent. And then all of a sudden, it loses that kind of like excitement. Like as a DJ, personally, if I have to do the same fucking shit every single week, it loses that excitement for me. Interesting. And then I kind of like, um, I'm not dialed in, you know, because it's just like, oh, I got to do this again. All right, whatever. So it's just really it's not. Yeah. It, uh, so it's just like I'd rather I want guys to be on their toes. I want them to come in excited and, uh, you know, for what they're about to do. Interesting. So, yeah, unless you find like someone like Scooter, who I know who like who's excited to approach yep. his Wednesday night mm -hmm. etching on differently right. every time. Yep. Or dynamic. I know he's just like he's always tapped into it's that that's more of a Latin night. Right. right? So he's like tapped into the Latin culture. He's trying to play new Latin shit. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the few, I mean, that was one of the few venues where I really heard like an extensive amount of uh, Latin tech house. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like he was playing a lot of it like, like, like last year, mm -hmm. like very early on last year. And I was like, wow, he's like 20 minutes in on this like Latin tech house and it was, it was killing it. Mm -hmm. But I thought, you know, I, 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 I really missed that. And I, I guess it's really on the DJ, right? Yeah. If you can find a DJ that can do it, yeah. then you'll get it done. Yeah. But until until then, I see. I always think venues just think, oh, like you know, we want a different marketing. It's better for marketing if we mm -hmm. rotate DJs. It it actually does help too. It does. Uh yeah. Obviously, um, especially like with with sidebar where it's like there's not really a lot of room for GA. It's all tables, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to give uh, your client something different. They don't want to come pay for the same shit over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. They want something yeah. different, you know? So that's that's kind of what uh, I go for as far as doing the bookings. And then El Chingon's open every day, right? We book DJs seven nights a week over there. That's crazy. On Sundays, we go from noon to 2 a.m. as far yeah, as like, bro. Mm -hmm. DJs. Yeah. So. Oh, so that's on both like, locations. Yeah. Wow. So wait, on a Sunday, how many rotations are there? How uh, many there's four DJs. Four Sundays. DJs. Yeah. God damn. We started yeah. noon, yeah. And yeah. We carried it. I've, I've night. done I've done uh Sunday night it's like Sunday going into the nighttime football and it's nothing but like yeah. fun time. Oh, I was just there like three weeks ago actually. Yeah. Holy shit. It's yeah. fun, bro. That's gotta be uh fucking that's gotta be an ass fuck to do the <laughs> weekly uh fucking roster. <laughs> 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 that's a lot of work um, though how many djs is that <laughs> too many <laughs> so when someone's um, like hey i gotta cancel that's like you're like fuck oh, off yeah. man it's um i have a, a love-hate relationship with djs right now do you have a rule for cancellations <laughs> no 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 like i i trust everybody that if I someone keeps person. canceling are you just like you're out of the oh yeah, yeah yeah i mean uh three strikes you're out <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. It's like, you know, like it, it, it doesn't matter that much to you is the way I take it, right? Mm. So, okay, so let me go find somebody else that does. Wait, explain yeah, your love-hate relationship with DJs. Um, <laughs> Right now. Because <laughs> it happened. And I'm sure. Uh, I get, me, so, me, I get me, so frustrated. Let me, let me remind you that you yourself are a DJ. Yeah, yes. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's it, 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 it's on the business side of things, right? Like, yeah. Like, I don't feel like um, DJs are... are Man, how can I word this? Um, I have like like simple shit, right? Like guys don't have common sense. <laughs> guys Explain. don't do, Explain. guys don't do like simple shit. Like send me your invoice. How are you gonna get paid? Mm. Send me. You don't send me an invoice, or like guys don't know how to like create an invoice. Sometimes guys send me word docs and stuff like that. Like you know, like I can edit out whatever you I want to pay you. Like little things like that. Like guys, uh, there's nobody really teaching DJs right now how to go about things. Right, the simple mm -hmm. things. Like how to like really uh, conduct yourself as a professional in a venue, like those those lessons that I was getting. Nobody's doing that right now. You know what I mean? So guys are just uh, yeah, they don't. <laughs> it's frustrating, man. Why are you telling them like, hey, do you know how to make an invoice? Yeah, yeah. I'm, and then I'm, you'll I'm just actually, show them like a YouTube video or something. <laughs> what? Show them uh, I, 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 like I'll send them <laughs> templates and shit like. That. But it's just like it's simple shit like that. Like you know, I'm just shocked that motherfuckers who don't know how to use Google. Yeah. I know. Like, right? a lot of shit can get Googled. And, mm -hmm. like, a lot of people DM me, and I'm like, yo, everything you're asking me is on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah. Just it's type like it on Google. Literally go on there, and they're like, Copy oh. and paste it. And they always say, like, yo, word, all right, that's what you have to say to me. I'm like, yo, like, what do you want me to, like, <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? You're asking me, like, the most, like, like you said, common sense yeah. shit. Like, you can yeah. literally it's, go uh, on YouTube. It, it, yeah, it, it really is. That's a lot. A lot of the issues are just so simple. Like things that you know, you, you really just stop and think about it. You'll figure it out on your own. But like you know, I'm still getting guys like you know, like the younger guys ask me about what's dress code. <laughs> what? Yeah, they're hitting me up. They're like, what's the dress code at the venue? Like, All you know, black. What, yeah. What's the best way to reach out to you? Like, let's say I'm a DJ and I got booked and I did a good job, mm -hmm. and maybe I haven't been back. 
Right. You know, uh, what's the best way for me to like Follow revisit? Up. Revisit that. You just hit me up. Everybody, I'm a, I'm open all the time. I'm open for communication. Just, and how would you like? But how would you like it approached? That's the one thing I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering. Yeah, how should one approach? Say I want to because call I, you. I talk to motherfuckers sometimes. They're like, I haven't talked to this dude in like a year and a half, and then he <laughs> hit me for a booking. So I'm wondering, like, how do you hit somebody up for a booking? I never hit anybody up for. I don't buy. I I like never reach out to um, anybody for booking. For for me specifically, um, I'm coming to you. Like, I'm not waiting for you to reach out to me. If I want you at the venue, mm-hmm. I'm coming. But are there times where, like, someone was dope and they just fell off your radar? Yeah, or you, you're always kind of aware? No, no I'm, I'm, I'm very aware. aware. Like, I, I really, like I said, I really love what I do as far as the bookings and stuff yeah. like that. Like, that's, like, like, I put a lot of hard work into that. That's why I'm so proud of everything I'm able to do for these venues because, uh, man, I love it so much, like, is, is my shit like I, I treat them like like my babies you know what i mean like i really take care of that job i really i try to be on top of my game at all times so it's like um yeah like i said i'm very proud of like what we're able to do like at sidebar and at El Chingo and like the, mm-hmm. the kind of talent that we're able to bring through those venues like i'm very proud of that but it, it's just one of those things where like i'm always on top of my game so it's just like I'll reach out to you if you're dope, and I think you're going to be able to contribute to either one of those venues and really bring something uh, exciting for the uh, for our clients. Like, I'll reach out to you. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm on top. I'm I'm constantly, uh, like on social media, like uh, finding out who's the dope new DJs. Like, what what um, you know for each market. I'm listening to mixes. I'm watching videos. I'm I'm like constantly doing my homework to find out who the best of the best is. Yeah, who's going to be a good fit for each venue. So, you know, I'm not just reaching out to homies. Like I said, it's not it's not one of those things. Like, I'm really trying to find who the best guys are. You know what I love about, I love about you is that you don't waste your energy or your time or your mm-hmm. breath on anything. Mm-hmm. No. Right? It's just like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it 110%. <laughs> or I'm just not going to do the shit. Mm. You know? It's, that's that's something like my I remember, you know, when I was a kid, my dad would always say shit. If you're gonna do something, do it right or don't do it at all. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's how you Mexican do it. Shit, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I heard that same <laughs> fucking line. Uh yeah, so it's just like uh that's just how I go about myself. Like I said, like I, I hold myself to a high standard all the yeah. times. So yeah. It's like uh yeah. I mean, I, I really that's how I approach a lot of shit. I mean, mm-hmm. I like, you know, I'm very sometimes I can be like a little intense even when I'm DJing. Mm-hmm. Because like if a, if I'm working with an opener or lighting guy mm-hmm. and their passion doesn't match my passion, yeah. I I just come off like aggressive or like I think there was like a there's like a, a new lighting guy that started a few months ago mm-hmm. uh, at Sidebar, right? And I would yell at him. I'm like, black it out, <laughs> black it out. He's like, what do you what do you mean? And he would like turn off all the lights. I'm like, yeah, turn off all the lights. And then like I was yelling at him. And I realized that then I'm like, yo, fam, I'm sorry I yelled at you. And he's like, no, no, I get it. He's like, I never knew, like, no one's ever told me to black out all the lights. I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, like, you know, throughout the night, you have to black it out so you can light it back up. If everything's mm-hmm. like this, if it's just lit up all night, there's no drama. So if I'm, if, if the song goes down, black it out. So it's when it goes back up, fucking hit him with all the lights. Yeah. He was like, oh, I get it. And then I remember he would just be like, I saw him like the month later and he's like, yeah, I've been, I've been blacking out a lot more. (laughs) I get what you're saying, but I felt so bad because I yelled at him. I'm like, black Uh it out. And he was like, what? And I'm like, black it out. Turn off all the fucking light. Turn it off. (laughs) And I was yelling at him, (laughs) but I wasn't yelling at him like, you know, because I was mad. I was just like, now's the time to do it because it's like, you know, this is the time to do it. The experience is going to be insane. And And, you know, it went off, but. Yeah, I mean, when people don't match that same, maybe I'm just being an asshole. No, 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 yeah. Because yeah, they also they, have don't, a, they don't match that same yeah, no, uh, passion no, or, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the same in where, like, the people that I work with and yeah. that I align myself with, I need them to be, you know, at the top of their game, too. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I want people to match that intensity. I want people to match my energy, my, my effort. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, effort, yeah. really. You know, I need that. I need that from everybody that I, I work with. For sure. So, yeah, it's very important. Yeah. I can just imagine. It must be so hard to find, like, a lighting guy now, right? I wouldn't even know where to look. Yeah. Like, who wants who wants? <laughs> yeah, to, where do you find a lighting like, guy? Like, who wants to be, like, <laughs> the lighting guy anymore, right? Yeah. 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 Lighting guy's probably <laughs> the DJ when he's on. And, it, and it's so important. It's, yeah. like, such yeah. an... And, it, and they pay... I, I, yeah, if, if I don't even know how much they make. They pay they're, decent. They pay really well. Mm-hmm. Actually, I was just talking to... Uh, one of one of uh, my homies, Rain, he was the lighting guy at Omnia, and he went to live. 
Uh-huh. Uh, he's been at Live Miami and he's coming back to Vegas. I think I'm, I might have him uh, come on the podcast. But like, yo, the lighting guys are so <laughs> fucking important in nightclubs. It is, man. I always like have conversations with lighting guys. Like yeah. at the end of the night, I'm like, yo, you saved me from like a couple like bad moments. Mm-hmm. Like you really like, you made me look really good tonight. Yeah. And they're like, yo, thank you, man. Because they just... They know like when you're off or when like let's say you you drop a song and it, and it doesn't hit as hard, they know to just lower the lights a little bit. And then like if people aren't reacting, like mm-hmm. that's the thing you got to get a lighting guy that knows the music. They got to mm-hmm. know the music and they got to know the energy. Yeah, the and not only that, like mm-hmm. I I have issues sometimes with like you know uh, an EDM lighting guy <laughs> trying to do hip hop lights. Yeah, uh huh. Because they can't move as fast. Yeah, and they don't yeah. know like when a build up or like. What a build up or mm-hmm. like a main when the one hits on an EDM song, mm-hmm. yeah. they don't know when the one hits on a hip hop song. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're playing Grove Street and you know when that fucking <laughs> drum hits and like yeah. they hit it like it's a one, like an EDM song, you're like, oh man, this this lighting guy knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, certain yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't even imagine like trying to find a lighting guy or anyone <laughs> like that. Or even anyone knowing that that something like that is vitally important. Mm-hmm. So how lo- how much longer are you in Vegas for? Uh, I leave tomorrow. Oh, good for you. <laughs> I gotta get the hell out of here. You're on no sleep test. Is it, <laughs> is it hitting you yet or no? Oh, yeah. His eyes are mad red. He's gonna go to sleep. He's gonna I'm go so, to I'm so go. fucking tired. Yeah, yeah. Thank but, uh, you for yeah, coming. Uh, uh, no, I uh, I'm glad we finally were able to make this happen. Yeah. So yeah, me too, it's, man. Uh, uh, feel honored to be here it's actually cool. uh before we leave i i gotta tell you that mm-hmm. you know the way you organize your music and you know <laughs> it's to me it's really um it's interesting i don't maybe i'm the only one interested but the way you organize your serato crates mm-hmm. and you integrate it so it works with record box right one of these days i gotta sit down with you and we oh, gotta go program. through it together you know yeah no I'll, I'll definitely help out um it's just one of those things for me it's like when i'm djing um I don't want to sit there and looking for shit. Yeah. I just want to react. Yeah. I want to be ready to go. I yeah. want to be four or five songs ahead of the crowd. Like I already know where I'm taking them, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean? mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, when I can do that, um, when I can just sit that, sit there and react and I can analyze everything, you know, it helps me. You know? I've been working on my crates, my uh-huh. Serato crates for three years, just rearranging it. <laughs> putting it back. Too long. Chaos. You like <laughs> well, no, like I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to like the most optimal way for me to yeah. do it. Cause I'm doing so many different rooms that like, I got to do like a classics and then Afro beats and R and B one day. And then right. I got to do Latino and then, uh, I got to do hip hop and EDM. And it's like, it's so many crates and there's so many different kinds of energies. Yeah. And uh, I'm just trying to like optimize it. Mm-hmm. And it's been taking me three years. Cause like one thing will work and it, but it won't work for everything. Yeah. yeah. And then some things will work. And then I'm like, I've kind of almost got it, but yo, it's that's why I kind of like I'm I need to sit down. I want to sit down with a, a, a couple homies. Right. And I just want to go through the crates, but I don't know if, if that's well, interesting to I'm me. like very diligent about the way like I organize too. Um like there's no shortcuts to the way I, I my workflow is, right? As far yeah. as organizing. Like um everything is labeled properly, everything is in its place. Like, I know where everything is. Like I said, I want to be able to react. I want to be able to move in a moment's notice and be able to go wherever I need to go, right? Uh, especially, like, uh, right now, like, that I do travel, right? And I'm, do, I'm doing uh, different markets, different venues across the country. I need to be able to adjust on the fly, mm-hmm. right? So um, there's no excuses. There's no excuses for me to not do a good job because yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm prepared, you know what I mean? Um, but that takes a lot of work. It, it takes does. a lot of time. Uh, and Dude, that's, that's I, I've been spending hours yeah. like I'm telling you like maybe eight to 12 hours a week mm-hmm. just really trying to reorganize stuff and see and, and just like oh let me put this here but like not forget about these sets yeah. but then include some new songs and old song in the sets mm-hmm. but then not get caught up in the sets you know and then <laughs> and it's just like weird like I'm really just trying to figure it it's all lot, out man. yeah it's, it's just so much yeah. and it's like I've some I've personally seen his folder and I still can't you can't no, no. yeah it, it works for me you know yeah. what i mean i tell people like people always hit me up for like my edits and shit like that I'm like, i don't give them all to you but it's not gonna work for you because this shit's built for me like i make these for myself you know what i mean yeah 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 so it's they're your like, yeah. tools yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 yo it, it's really a pleasure to have you on the on the podcast Appreciate finally you guys, man. thank man. you uh yeah. before we leave though craig i just wanted to thank chaos because um 
I'll never forget this. Uh, he's always been a great supporter of the podcast and individually and as a collective here. Mm-hmm. But uh, when he went through his daughter's situation, um, I think it happened in May, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, we had an event for the Road Podcast um, in June. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I don't know how to how would one process this after losing a kid, but he was there supporting us at our event a month later after he went through that horrific tragedy and stuff. Mm-hmm. I just want to thank you, bro, because I, 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 when I saw you that I was like, yo, what the fuck is he doing here? Like, he should be home. He shouldn't be here. He should be, like, I appreciate his support, and I, but I'm, I just couldn't understand. Like, I was like, man, you are putting the bravest face, and, you know, you're showing us support where we could understand you being home. And and I just you always been supportive of us, but that shit just yeah it shit hit me different. So uh, yeah, appreciate it. That. It's uh like I said, I feel very indebted to the industry, right? To 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 the culture, like just DJing in general, man. Like I, I tell you, I tell people all the time, I love this shit so much, man. Yeah, I love this shit so much, and um, especially you know going through something like that, perspective it changes completely different. So yeah. you value things a lot more, right? Mm-hmm. Everything I value it so much more. So I'm very thankful for everything that i have everything that uh, that i'm a part of like so yeah of course i'm gonna be there i'm gonna show yeah. support you know yeah, yeah, so yeah. um plus also um being around like you know other djs and being around the industry like i actually went back to work like a week later because that was my comfort zone you know yeah. what i mean i felt comfortable there like i felt safe right uh i guess it's like one way you could put it um i needed to be in there you know i needed djing i i probably rushed coming back but i needed this shit yeah yeah so yeah so but i just want to say thank you man yeah, oh, yeah. i appreciate you guys man. salute man salute <laughs> chaos enjoy the rest of your birthday uh appreciate celebrations that. I appreciate yeah. It, yeah i might join you maybe tonight <sighs> let's see let's go for, for a certain amount of time and then i gotta tap out <laughs> and then bounce, i'm you trying know? to tap out already man yeah. but yeah you get some get some rest oh, i'm going to. you're on no sleep right now yeah yeah so. Yeah, you got a limited time to do that, so yeah. enjoy yourself. Yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> DJ Chaos in the building. Thank you, man. Cool. Okay. If you want to watch more episodes from Rogue Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.